The Los Angeles Lakers dominated the NBA's Western Conference in the 80s. Los Angeles won the Western Conference an incredible eight times during the 80s and additionally won five NBA titles during this decade. But entering the 90s, the Showtime Lakers era would begin to come to an end as it was going to definitely feel like a new era for Lakers fans. 90 Sports and Soldier presents the Los Angeles Lakers in the 90s. After the 1988-89 season, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would retire, but the Lakers still had Magic Johnson, James Worthy, Byron Scott, A.C. Green, and Michael Cooper, and didn't slow down for the 89-90 season as Los Angeles had the best record at 63-19. Magic Johnson would win his third MVP award, despite having fewer first place votes than Charles Barkley, but anyways the Lakers had the top seed in the West. They defeated the Rockets in the first round, but surprisingly, the Lakers in the second round lost to the younger and more athletic Phoenix Suns with Tom Chambers, Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley, and Jeff Hornacek. This would be the first time the Lakers would not play in the Western Conference Finals since 1981. After the season, head coach Pat Riley, he would resign, take it off, and then coach Knicks and Michael Cooper would not remain with the Lakers as he'd go on to play pro ball overseas. Enter the 90-91 NBA season and Mike Dunleavy would be the new head coach. Dunleavy was an assistant with the Milwaukee Bucks for two seasons and while being an assistant, he appeared in seven games as a player. Then the 90-91 Lakers, they finished with the second best record in the West, but they were able to get past the top seeded Portland Trailblazers in the Western Conference Finals. But in essence, this would be the end of the Showtime Lakers as LA, they lose to Chicago Bulls in the finals, which would be the advent of a new dynasty. Now, to back up a bit, for the Western Conference playoffs, James Worthy, he had issues with his ankle. And then during the 91-92 season, James Worthy would have season-ending knee injury, which resulted in big game James, not being the same player he once was. But what really marked the end of the Showtime Lakers was when Magic Johnson announced on November 7, 1991, that he tested positive for HIV, which prompted Magic to retire immediately. So here's the Lakers roster going forward as LA still had some talent. Their strength was definitely down low with players like Vladi Divac, Eldon Campbell, Sam Perkins, and AC Green. Now real quick, I just want to mention that Divac and Campbell were two really good late first round draft selections by Jerry West. But with this roster, LA, they weren't in that position where they weren't good enough to compete for championships but they weren't bad enough to have better odds for getting higher draft picks with the draft lottery for a greater chance to draft an impact player. But LA, they had Jerry West making the personnel decisions. For the 1991-92 Lakers, they finished 43-39 and, and lost to the top seeded Trailblazers in the first round. But during the offseason, in a very surprising move, Mike Dunleavy, he left the Lakers to coach the Milwaukee Bucks. Now with the Bucks, Dunleavy, he was offered a huge contract and was going to a franchise he knew well and also the Bucks owner, he really liked Dunleavy. The Lakers had the 15th pick in the NBA draft and as mentioned earlier, their strength was down low. LA was looking to get quickly better and younger in the backcourt with an aging Byron Scott and Sedell 3. Thus LA, they drafted Anthony Peeler who could really shoot. For a 15th pick overall, this wasn't a horrible selection. Yes, Luchal Sprewell, he could have been selected, but in reality, this wasn't a bad pick as Peeler showed some promise during his second season before he got injured. Moreover, in the same draft, the Sonics, they drafted shooting guard Doug Christie, but he was traded along with Benoit Benjamin to LA for Sam Perkins. Now Christie, he did not play a lot in LA, but he later became a really terrific defender and someone who perhaps irritated Lakers fans in the 2000s was Sacramento. For the 92-93 season, the Lakers, they went 39-43 and once again earned the 8th seed in the playoffs. But in the best 5 series, the Lakers, they had a 2 games to 0 lead on the Suns who posted the best record in the NBA that year. But the Suns, they stormed back and eventually won the series 3 games to 2. After the season, AC Green and Byron Scott, they'd no longer be Lakers and James Worthy, who would end up playing only one more season before retiring. For the 1993 NBA draft, the Lakers, at 12, they selected small forward George Lynch. Now, I thought Lynch, he was a very strong defender in the NBA, but his production and minutes, they decreased in each of his three seasons in LA. But Jerry West, he really nailed his second pick selection, selecting point guard Nick Van Exel, who would really be a solid point guard for LA and make an all-star team while with the Lakers. But for the 93-94 season, Los Angeles, they were in the middle of having a season that Laker fans were not used to seeing at all. LA was really in danger of missing a playoffs for the first time since 1976. The Lakers are 27-37, which resulted in firing their head coach Randy Fun. Now in a desperate attempt to make it to the postseason, 
LA brought in Magic Johnson to coach the team's final 16 games. However, LA they went 5 and 11 in those games, finished with a 33 and 49 record and thus did not make the playoffs. But despite the subpar showing, things would get quickly better for the Lakers. For the 94-95 NBA season, the Los Angeles Lakers had hired former Rockets and Bucks head coach Del Harris. Now around this time, the Lakers, they're missing that player who would give the ball to, isolate and score, which perhaps led to Jerry West trading a 1995 first round pick to the Suns to acquire Cedric Sabalos. Sabalos, he could really score. Now with Phoenix Sabalos, he was going to be like the fourth option on a very talented Phoenix Suns team. But the Lakers, the talented young scoring Sabalos would be the top option on offense. As for the draft, LA selected a skinny but athletic shooting guard from Temple in Eddie Jones' 10th overall. This would be an excellent selection as Jones would be a two-time All-Star with the Lakers and like all players coming out of Temple, learn to play defense as Jones was an excellent defender. Now I want to take a quick glance at this Lakers roster as this was a pretty good starting five with a very versatile and talented center in Vlade Divac, a very good defender, shot blocker and rebounder in Eldon Campbell at power forward, a score that was really needed in Cedric Sabalos, and perhaps the best young backcourt in the NBA in Eddie Jones and Nick Van Exel, and there was also some talent coming off the bench. As for the season, the Lakers improved going 48-34, and earning the fifth seed in the West. Now for this season, Sabalos, he'd be an all-star, Del Harris, he was coach year, and Jerry West, he was executive of the year. LA upset the Seattle Sonics in the first round, but then the Lakers are eliminated by the top-seeded Spurs. For the 95-96 NBA season, LA looked like a team on the rise. During the season, Lakers at one point were 24-18, then all of a sudden, Magic Johnson announced he was returning to play for the Lakers. Now, I don't really know how much Magic's return energized the Lakers, but LA did play better as they finished with a 53-29 record. However, after the season, Magic Johnson would retire for good. But what happened next was one of the most impactful off-seasons a franchise could ever have. First in the NBA draft, Jerry West knew that there was something extremely special if you're seeing a 17-year-old high schooler and Kobe Bryant during a pre-draft workout. But the Lakers had 24th pick in the first round. Meanwhile, New Jersey, they had the 8th pick and was in the market to draft a shooting guard. What happened is that Bryant's agent, Arn Tellum, kind of discussed with the Nets not to take Bryant. Part of that was a threat that Bryant would play in Italy. And also Sonny Vaccaro, the sneaker man, persuaded his friend Tellum to get Bryant to a better market. What happened is that prior to the draft, a deal was made where Vladi Divac would go to Charlotte and with the Hornets 13th pick, they would select Kobe Bryant and then trade him to LA. Divac, he threatened to retire if he was traded, but ultimately he went to Charlotte, which resulted in Bryant becoming a Laker. Furthermore, point guard Derek Fisher was selected by the Lakers with 24th selection overall. Now with that trade with Divac going to Charlotte, the Lakers had freed up some cap space which gave them a shot at signing Shaquille O'Neal. At the time, there were two players who had million dollar contracts in Alonzo Mourning and Juwan Howard. Now Orlando, they were able to offer Shaq the most money because at the times, teams could exceed the salary cap if they resigned their own players. But the Orlando Magic, they lowballed Shaq with the first offer, but later on both sides were somewhat getting closer Shaq was looking for something close to 20 million a year. Jerry West, his initial offer was 7 years 95 million, which is not accepted by Shaq. But then West, he tried to free up even more cap space by trading George Lynch and Anthony Peeler. That also involved second round draft picks. The Magic, they got word of this offer and upped their offer to Shaq for 7 years 150 million. The newspaper Orlando Sentinel put out a poll question and they asked if Shaquille O'Neal was worth 150 million. And 91% of the people said no, which is not well received by Shaq. This was the point where it seemed like Shaq would not be playing in Orlando. As a result, this led to the LA Lakers signing Shaquille O'Neal for 7 years, $120 million, a record contract. The 1996-97 LA Lakers. Now during the season, Cedric Sabalos, he was basically traded for Robert Ory. The Lakers had the best record in the Western Conference at the All-Star break. Shaquille O'Neal and Eddie Jones are named All-Stars. Kobe Bryant, he only played about 15 minutes a game this season, but won the dunk contest. But then there was a stretch where O'Neal would miss significant time due to ligament damage in his knee, but would return for the playoffs. LA then went 56-26, earned the fourth seed, but were eliminated by Utah in the second round. For the 97-98 NBA season, the Lakers would have four All-Stars in Shaq, Eddie Jones, Nick Van Exel, and Kobe Bryant, who was voted in by the fans. Now Bryant, he only started one game this season, but would get more playing time. Shaq played in six games this season, as the Lakers they went 61-21, but once again they were eliminated by the Jazz, but this time in the Western Conference Finals. Now during the series, with the Lakers down 3-0, Nick Van Exel after practice in a team huddle shouted Cancun, 
And that really made some players and executives quite angry. Perhaps this led to Van Exel being traded to Denver, and Derek Harper and Derek Fisher, they'd take over at the point guard spot. From the 1998-1999 season, there'd be a lockout to shorten the NBA season to 50 games. Del Harris was fired after a 6-6 six six start. Then during the season, the Lakers, they'd trade Eddie Jones and Eldon Campbell to the Charlotte Hornets for B.J. Armstrong, J.R. Reed, and Glenn Rice. Now from my point of view, it looks like the Hornets got a really good return in Jones and Campbell for what they had to give up. But for the Lakers, they were getting a veteran score in Rice, who was a natural small forward. But Kobe Bryant, now he was able to really take over that shooting guard spot with Eddie Jones gone. Anyways, the Lakers, they finished a 31-19 record and lost in the second round in the playoffs to the Spurs. Subsequently, the Lakers hired Phil Jackson to lead the purple and gold, which led to great success. When you're the GM of the Lakers, one major advantage you have is that the LA Lakers franchise is perhaps the NBA franchise that is most appealing to free agents. It certainly helped that the Lakers were able to get below the salary cap to sign Shaquille O'Neal, but if you put that acquisition aside, I think Jerry West did a pretty good job of drafting and making trades. But the signing of Shaq was obviously huge, and although the 90s was a decade where Lakers fans saw mediocrity and no championships, it was a decade where Jerry West was building a dynasty that led to the Lakers dominating in the early 2000s. Real quick, I just want to thank all those who have supported 90 Sports Nostalgia. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and check out the links below for Patreon and merch. Thank you so much. The Los Angeles Lakers in the 1990s.